Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. Today, we're going to be discussing how to replace the batteries in some of those dead quartz watches that you have lying around your watch box. I know you've got them. I've got them. Uh, and the impetus for this was kind of the wrist check for today. Uh, Scrooge McDuck watch. It is a quartzy. It's working, yes, but it got me to thinking that I have a bunch of other oh, TGV Squale. Sorry, automatic. I uh, wrist checks over. It uh, got me to thinking I had a bunch of other quartz driven watches that I've accumulated over the past few decades that definitely needed their batteries replaced. I, I did some a while ago for myself and then I saw, oh man, I've got another three or four that really need to be replaced. So I said, let's do a watch norm on it. And I've kind of hesitated on this in the past. Number one, because there's so many different movements out there and so many different ways that batteries are held in. Uh, so I picked three. Hopefully it gives you a little overview of you know, kind of what to expect. But everybody's are, everybody's are different. I don't think any of these have screw clamps for the batteries. So if you take apart your watch, it's got a screw clamp. You know, then you got to do some unscrewing and screwing back together. And you have to you know, be careful. That's really, if you're going to attempt this, which I'm sure a lot of you already do, I mean, if you can regulate a watch, you can do this. But if you're going to attempt this, you just need to take your time, be careful, and just have the tools at your disposal that you need. Uh, the easiest thing to do when, you know, when changing a battery is to bump into something you're not supposed to and render the watch useless. So how do you know your watch is a dead battery? Well, if you're not a watchmaker, you unfortunately probably have to take it apart, change the battery, and see if it fires back up again. A lot of times watchmakers can put it on a little plate and it runs a little current through it and it can determine whether the movement is alive or not. Uh, I think that these watches I have today for you are just dead because they've been sitting in the drawer for a while and it's time for them to be replaced. So again, this is by no means every different watch out there to replace a battery, not at all. There are many different types. You know, Google and YouTube are certainly your friend. Obviously, I'm doing this video but go to Google and just check out maybe someone's done your movement before and uh, you can get some tips and tricks. But here is my rendition of how to change batteries on a couple different watches. So enough, let's, uh, let's check it out. I pulled three watches out of my personal collection that are in dire need of a battery change. I've got an old Torno dress watch. I have a Fossil watch and I have a Junkers Pilots watch. I'm going to hopefully do each one of them and you know, I say hopefully because I, I want to show you different technologies or different ways that batteries are installed and removed and I really don't know what these watches hold until I dig into them. So what we're going to do is we'll start on the right and we'll work our way over and we'll check each one out. So the first thing we see about this fossil watch is that it's on this deployant clasp. So I just want to knock the clasp out, uh, take it off the edge there so it's easier for me to work on the watch. And just like you saw in the other videos, I'm going to stick a, a tool into one of the holes for the spring pin, tilt it, and the whole clasp opens. And then looking at the case back, well, it's not screwed down. It's probably some kind of a pop back. And I think I just saw something right there. Over here, there's a little raise, a little lip in the lid and I'll be able to fit a case back knife under there and pry it open. And this was in one of my other watch and learns and I will try to link to it uh, while I do this. So we're just going to put the edge of the knife up under the case. You may want to coat the watch with tape or something so you don't damage it, but I'm really not too worried. These watches are, are fairly old and fairly beat up. So the back comes off. You'll notice with the back, let's take a look. Here's the gasket, this black ring. It's it's still in there. I never take this watch anywhere near the water, so I'm not worried about replacing it when I'm done. And there's a notch in the cover. You see that notch right there? That notch goes over the winding stem of the watch when you put it back on. So make sure you check out how it's aligned when you take it off so you put it back in the same exact manner. So let's check out what we're looking at here. So you can see the movement, and I'll let it focus in, and now we can see a battery. It looks like it was an Energizer battery. So the battery is a 377, 376, so either one will work. So I'll go over and check out what I've got, and I'll get a replacement for it. You know, a lot of times batteries have, you know, very different numbers on them all the time. You might see an SR number on it. 
and it's just different ways to denote them. Your friend here is going to be Google. Just start Googling different battery types and numbers and it'll show you what the equivalent replacements are and a lot of times the box will actually have or the package will actually have the equivalent replacement. So the thing about changing batteries is you just want to be very careful. You know, in, in this instance, I don't see the exposed coil anywhere. Um, but usually there'll be like a red coil, and that's the, that's like the keep out zone. You don't want to touch that area. Uh, so here I don't see anything, so we're just going to figure out how the battery is held in, and then we will remove it. So here I can see I've got this little arm right here. And if I pull that back, I'm thinking the battery should just spring out. So let's check that out and see what happens. So I'm going to put my tool right up against it and just pull it back a little bit. And you can see that it kind of just, I think it's out actually. It is out. It's up. I just can't get the depth perception that I need. I'm just picking it up. And there you go. So I'm going to remove the battery, put it on the side. I'm going to get my replacement. So here is my replacement. Uh, it's made by a different manufacturer. It doesn't matter. It is battery number 377 but now we also see it comes with an SR 626 SW and that's just a different number it tells you more about the battery the 6 meaning it's 6 millimeters in diameter and the 26 I believe that means it's 2.6 millimeters thick I, that's I'm pretty sure that's what that means uh, SW is slow drain uh, I don't really recall what the SR stands for but you want to match up the batteries 100% to what you have if you're not sure now that now you've got the watch open, you can see who makes the movement. Here I can see Seiko Epson, Japan. I can get the number of the movement. I can go to the manufacturer's website and see what battery it's supposed to take. But you always want to replace it with the same battery unless you know for sure that a high drain will work in a slow drain or a slow drain will work in a high drain. Um, usually if you have like a chronograph or an alarm, it might be a little bit different. So we're going to pop this open and uh, install it. So there's the battery ready to go back. This is the new battery ready to go back into the watch. And I'll be honest with you, I usually do this with my hands. Using a metal tool poking around, probably not the best idea. I mean, you could use plastic tweezers, um, but they're not too precise. I'll try to do it this way. So what you're going to do in this instance is kind of slip it under this other arm first. See this arm right here? And then we're going to push it down while pulling back this arm, and it'll go under, and it'll clip into place. So I know it sounds complicated. It's really not. Once you have it in front of you, it's all fairly simple. I'm going to just push it down a bit. Okay, I'm going to, whoops, see that? My see gloves. Uh, you're better off not doing it with gloves on. Do it with finger cots or something. Uh, we're going to just pull this back. I'm going to slip this down. And there it is. It's over. We'll flip it. This does not have a seconds hand, does it? So it is 7.25 according to this. We'll let it tick for a minute. If it doesn't have a seconds hand, you can probably put it to your ear and hear it. It should tick every second, every five seconds, every seven seconds, however the movement is set up to tick. Uh, but while we wait for it to hopefully advance in time, I will zoom out a bit. And let's talk about putting the back of the watch back on. So here is the back of the watch. Now again, we want to be careful. We want to find where that notch is. Here it is. So that notch needs to go over the stem, the winding stem. So we're going to try to line it up as best as we can. Make sure the gasket is still there, which it is. Um, we would cl maybe clean the watch if it's dirty. This one doesn't happen to be very dirty. Uh, before we do any of this, to make sure that the surface is seat. Uh, probably much more important in a dive watch. And I'm going to snap these two together. It didn't snap yet. That was just it finding its home. Uh, you may need a, a press to put it back together. Um, this watch, I don't think I do. There we go. It snapped right. Nope, oh, see that? Look around, see over here by my thumb. It's still not on. It's, it's kind of just sneaking up in different areas. I'll see if I can press this. And now I think it's in there. I think it is. Let's see. Let's just, just do a little dance around. This looks like it might be raised a bit, but I don't think it is. I think it's just uh, a visual uh, trick of the eyes. We'll flip it over and look at that. It's now 727. So I've been drowning for two minutes here. And then we'll put the little pin back and we are ready to go with a battery in our new watch. And you know, it didn't cost us really any, any, anything much, no specialized tools, batteries you can get online, they're extremely cheap. The days of going to Radio Shack and spending $5 on a button battery are over. So I'll put this one back together and we'll move on to the next one. It's all buttoned up and it's ready to go through another day of wear. This watch actually dates back to 1993, the first watch that my girlfriend, who then became my wife, uh, ever gave me. 
Next up will be a Junkers pilot's watch. Uh, this was my father-in-law's watch that I had gifted him. We had gifted him many years ago, and the battery is dead, so it's time for replacement. We can see here that the back is a screw-down back, uh, so it uh, it's not a pop back. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna attack it. The first thing we need to do, like I said before, it's just mo so much easier if you just open up the bracelet so it's not flopping around on you. So I'm going to just remember where the pin is, the second from the end. Put a tool in, press it, pull it out, and and now it just the whole thing opens. It's much easier to work on. So it's a screw down case back. Again, there, I have videos out there on how to remove it. I was able to loosen it with this uh, two point cheapy case back wrench, and once it's loosened, then the ball takes over and does the job easily. So we're going to unscrew it, and we're going to just knock it over, and the back falls off. I'm going to look at the back, we'll find the gasket, the gasket's there, everything looks good, and now we look at the movement. So here we have, it is a, a 371 battery, but more importantly, it's held on with different technology, and the movement we can see is a little bit different. So now, this right here, this red area, this is like danger zone. You don't want to touch it, you don't want to go near it, it's very fragile, you can break it quite easily, so you really don't even want to touch it. Uh, so a lot of times when people are working on these, that's what they'll do. They'll touch that and they'll break a wire and then it's going to go to the watchmaker to be repaired. So for this movement, what I'm going to do is see this lever. This is where the danger zone is. I'm going to push this lever over. The battery is going to spring out. But if my tweezer slips, I'm going to bump right into this coil and cut a wire. So you just need to be careful. Push this back. The battery pops out. We take out old number 371. We get new number 371, you can see, replaces all uh, SR920W and SR920SW, so it replaces both of those types of batteries. Again, you just want to make sure that it's the right battery for your application. This one does both applications, 9 millimeters in diameter and about 2 millimeters thick, so let's get it out of there. So here's the new battery. We're going to put it in. I just flipped the watch around just so you can see what I'm doing better. The battery is going to slip under this little lip here. On the far side, we're going to push it down. I'm going to push it out with my finger. At the same time, I'm going to just nudge this little lever over a little bit. And I'll say a lot of times what people, that's already done, a lot of times what people do is they see this screw and they start unscrewing it. Don't. Uh, you don't want to do that. You don't need to. Even though the lever slides under there, it's not necessary. So let's just flip it over and do our sanity check. Uh, it's ticking, so it's working. And then we're going to reverse the process. Uh, again, I'm going to look at the outside here. It's not very dirty. If it was, I'd scrub it maybe. Um, but then you got to be careful of getting debris in the movement. That's a whole other thing. You, know, you don't want dirt in your watches. But again, not a diving watch. So I'm not too concerned about water resistance. And it's not an often wearer, so it doesn't get too dirty. And now it's just really a matter of finding how it goes on. I find that the ball is best for this, just a little bit of light pressure and you kind of just spin and eventually it finds the raceway and it finds the thread and now it's on. I am not going to use the case back tool to tighten it all the way, I'm just going to push firmly and rotate and that is surely more than enough. All that remains is for me to put the deployant pin back in which I have to find. There it is and we put the bracelet back together and we're done. And there you go, lives to fight another day. Great watch. Big date, candy cane hands, awesome. Again, this was my father-in-law's. We gave it to him many years ago, and then after he passed, it was given back to me, which I thought was really cool. So now I'm happy that I'll be able to wear this one again as well. Last up, I know I've actually never replaced this battery myself. Uh, it's been sitting in the drawer for a while. Uh, this was given to me by my parents in 97. It was for a birthday, um, but it was also really... I, more of a graduation gift from college. I was graduating from the Cooper Union uh, and uh, they got me this watch. It's a Torno watch. It's a beautiful white dial. Uh, super thin, super small. I don't know what it is, 34 millimeter. Uh, very vintage. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is a different strap than, than it came on. I'm not actually totally sure. Uh, but again, I haven't worn it in a long time, so uh, let's attack this one. I'm definitely going to take the strap off because I don't know where the case back comes off, it might be hidden under the lugs. So I took the strap off, and again, that's been covered in other videos, and actually, as I was taking the strap off, I finally did see there's a little nib right 
there at the case back and I'm going to try to get my knife in there and pry it open. We'll see if we're successful. There it goes. Got it. Surprise. Look at that. You weren't expecting that, were you? So the way this works is the movement actually comes out of the case. The, so here is, I really just peeled off the crystal is what I did. The whole thing comes apart. The movement is in the case back, and now we got to remove the watch and the movement from the case back, and then we can get to the battery. And there you go. It is a 373. So we're going to now, now we need to put this down gently, obviously, because it has hands and stuff. Uh, we need to be careful where we put this down to make sure that we don't muck up the hands. So now I've placed it in a movement holder, as you can see, so it doesn't, uh, so I don't damage anything. And now let's zoom in on it. So we see here, it's another one of those, it's a side clip. Uh, so all we have to do is wedge up the battery and we'll put a new one in. I'm going to just sneak up over here underneath and actually just try to grab it and pivot it up. That's it. Flew out. I don't care. I don't need it. So here's another 373. I'm going to slip it in basically backwards to the way it came out. I'm going to slide it on over to that clip on the side and then it's really just a press with your hand, but I don't want to press too hard since I'm pressing on a dial. Um, you know, this isn't a, a firm watch case. There we go. I think that's in. I will remove it from the movement holder. I'll put it back in the case. Again, there's no seconds here, so we need to, you know, monitor it and uh, see how it goes. But let's, um, why don't we set the time so it's something easy that we can see. We'll go right to dead noon. There we go. And we'll set it back into the case just like the way we found it originally. Make sure it's all in there. And of course, we want to be very mindful of dust and everything else. And, you know, luckily this dial is white. So if I'm getting dust in it, I'm never really going to notice. <laughs> but, you know, obviously you want to be mindful of everything. And then the case just kind of goes together in the same way that we took it apart. So I'm just going to pick it up and try to line everything up with my eyeballs case back which happens to be most of the case the stem and we can get everything lined up here and then I'll be able to this give me a definite push together there it goes the crown is in and it looks like it's already moved a little bit to 1201 we'll test it out oh this is something I didn't mention on the other ones after you put it back together Guys, test it out. You know, pull the crown, make sure it pulls out, make sure it pushes in, make sure you can still spin it freely. If you can't spin it freely, you might have put something back on it wrong and uh, you are precluding the, the stem from spinning. So that's that one. Let's put the strap back on it, the same way we took it off. There we go. Again, ready, ready to see another day. So this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you how to change the batteries in a couple of different watches, breathing new life into them so we can wear them again. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so yet. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.